Here's a good one that keeps coming up lately. Um, unmarried couples buying a home together. Now more than ever, I think they say one in five couples that buys a home together right now is unmarried. And that's great <laughs> when things are great, but um, there are some things that as an unmarried couple you should take into consideration before signing a deed or a mortgage on a property. So when a couple splits up, when a couple is married, purchases a house, um, when they split up, the divorce law dictates what happens. The divorce law will, you know, make you either buy the other person out of the of the home. It'll make you refinance. It'll divide the assets. That's there's a precedent for that. Um, the problem with unmarried couples buying properties together is that we don't have a legal precedent for dividing assets and. Uh, so this has actually come up a few times, it, and I get it a lot. I get people that will send me messages saying, you know, hey, I bought this house with my boyfriend, we broke up, you know, whatever. There's a lot of problems that can come of it. Um, there's no legal protection for unmarried couples purchasing homes together. So my suggestion, of course, this is like the hindsight suggestion, but my suggestion is uh, prior to purchasing a home together is to have a cohabitation agreement formed. And this is going to be your legal protection. And it's so smart to, to do these agreements and do contracts when things are good. Just like as an agent, we do listing contracts, everybody's happy. Um, we spell out you know, what could possibly happen, what bad things could happen, and we agree when everybody's happy and everything's great. And then if everything goes to shit, uh, we know. <laughs> What's the, we have it, we signed it. Um, so a co cohabitation agreement is something that should be um, drawn up by an attorney and make sure that it's legally binding. That's going to be obviously the most important thing. So what it does is it, um, it basically spells out that if you break up, how the assets are divided, how the mortgage is handled. If you are in a mortgage, on a mortgage with a partner and you do break up, your and you don't, and one of you doesn't refinance out of that and divide the assets, etc. Uh, your former partner can make financial decisions that will affect you forever. So one thing is that if um, if the mortgage isn't being paid, let's say that person keeps the house, that person's living in the house, and you have moved out. If that person isn't making their mortgage payments, that will affect your credit. Um, and that's no good. If that person gets into any kind of legal trouble or anything, there could be a lien placed on the house that will affect you. Liens um, will be paid upon the sale of the house if they're not released ahead of time. But w when that house sells, that lien is coming off the top. So these are things that can really affect you. I have two people I know personally that are being affected by this right now. Um, so. Those are things to keep in mind. A cohabitation agreement is pretty standard. Many attorneys have them already prepared. Um, and just a suggestion before getting into a uh, big decision with somebody is to do that. A home is generally your most, your, your largest investment in your life. And it's something that, you know, will, if you make the wrong decision, it could stick with you lifelong. So that's just my little warning for everybody. Have a happy holiday. Um, Merry Christmas. If you need anything, please feel free to send me a message. Uh, if you are looking for a value of your home, if you're thinking that maybe the new year is the time to sell your home, if you just want a brief synopsis of what's going on in the market, feel free to send me a message. Have a great day.